Here we'll learn an overview of seizures and epilepsy. To begin start a table, let's run through some key definitions. To note that a seizure is an acute, transient neurological event. It typically lasts less than five minutes in duration. It's caused by abnormal, excessive, or synchronous electrical discharges within the brain. To note that epilepsy is the syndrome of recurrent, unprovoked seizures. As we'll discuss elsewhere, some seizures are provoked by certain clinical conditions, such as intracranial hemorrhages or metabolic conditions, whereas others are unprovoked. To note that status epilepticus refers to seizure activity that fails to terminate within the anticipated time period. This time period is variably defined as anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes, or it refers to a series of consecutive seizures without intervening recovery. Indicate that status epilepticus has a mortality of 15 to 20 percent. However, the underlying cause of the seizures is the major contributor to this poor prognosis. It's important to keep this in mind because as clinicians we should never give up on a patient no matter how long the duration of the status epilepticus. The seizures can go on for weeks and patients can still have a good outcome if the underlying etiology is treated. Next, let's address some key epidemiology. To note that anywhere from 5 to 10% of people will have a seizure at some point in their life, most often in early childhood or late adulthood. Not everyone who has a seizure will have violent convulsions, however. As we'll learn, seizure semiology is broad and varied. Seizures can manifest as something small and focal, such as a strange feeling or visual illusion, to something big and severe, such as violent stiffening and shaking. To note that anywhere from 1 to 4% of people will have epilepsy. Different organizations and societies provide widely varying estimates. To note the following common etiologies of seizure, stroke, brain tumor, brain injury, and central nervous system infection. To note that the parasitic disease, neurosister sarcosis, is the most common cause of epilepsy worldwide. It comes from the parasite, Tinea solium. Now for our diagram, let's start with a categorization of seizures based on their onset pattern. Draw a brain and show that focal, also referred to as partial, onset seizures originate from networks within one hemisphere, typically in a discrete region. Then draw another brain and show that generalized onset seizures originate from networks that involve both hemispheres. If a seizure begins in one hemisphere and subsequently involves both hemispheres, we call this a focal to bilateral seizure, also known as secondarily generalized seizure. Indicate that in focal onset seizures, awareness, meaning consciousness, can be impaired. This is also called complex partial seizures, or preserved, referred to as simple partial seizures. Note that in generalized seizures, by definition, awareness is almost always impaired. Then indicate that clinically, focal seizures can have either motor or non-motor features. At the end, we'll learn some helpful localizing features of focal seizures. Now divide generalized seizures into motor and non-motor variants. Indicate that the major types of motor seizures we'll address are tonic-clonic, myoclonic, and atonic seizures. And the major non-motor seizure type is absent seizures. Now let's walk through key generalized seizure semiologies and prominent mimickers of each seizure type. Start a table. Across the top, write semiology, key mimicker, and epilepsy syndrome. Begin with the most prominent generalized motor seizure type, tonic-clonic seizure, also known as grand mal seizure. To find the tonic phase as stiffening and the clonic phase as rhythmic jerking. Indicate that a key mimicker is convulsive syncope convulsions brought on by a loss of adequate cerebral perfusion. Note, however, that one of the most common mimickers of all seizure types is non-epileptic spells, also known as psychogenic seizures. Indicate that tonic-clonic seizures can occur in a wide variety of epilepsy syndromes. To best understand the clinical semiology of a tonic-clonic seizure, let's diagram what happens to a person at each phase. First, the tonic phase. Show that there's tonic stiffening. Show that the back and neck are arched. The patient is lying down because there's a loss of consciousness. Now, the clonic phase. Show that 
It's characterized by rhythmic jerking, convulsions of the face, arms, and legs. During the ictal phase, there's often apnea with frothing at the mouth, choking sounds, and cyanosis, a blue appearance to the skin, which can mimic a cardiac arrest. Then show that after the event, there's post-ictal relaxation, which involves a stupor with possible bladder, bowel, incontinence, and deep, slow respirations. Draw a small strip of an EEG. We'll show just a couple of tracings, but for reference, indicate that the region between the vertical lines is one second, and the number of wave cycles within that one second is the number of hertz. Indicate that at the initiation of the seizure, during the tonic phase, the EEG is a 10 hertz, fast frequency, low amplitude waveform. Now indicate that during the clonic phase, the EEG is a 4 hertz, a slower frequency, spike in wave activity. Finally, indicate that after the event, there's postictal slowing with only a few wave cycles per second. Next, indicate that mild clonic seizures manifest with brief, shock-like muscle jerks. Indicate that they're often mistaken for a movement disorder. Write that myoclonic seizures are an important component of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, JME, which begins in adolescence and is one of the photosensitive epilepsies. Seizures can be triggered by flashing or flickering lights. For JME, draw a bed and a sunrise because the events characteristically cluster upon awakening in the morning. And draw a bolt of lightning because the jerks are described as lightning-like. Draw a person lying in bed, show that they manifest with symmetric, irregular, shock-like jerks of the shoulders and arms most notably, which can cause the person to drop items, but can also affect the legs, which can cause falls. Indicate that the EEG demonstrates polyspikes, which correlate with the mild clonic jerks, and a characteristic disorganized 4 to 5 hertz polyspike and wave discharge. As mentioned, these discharges have a strong photoparaxismal response. Flashing lights can trigger these discharges. Next, indicate that atonic seizures cause a loss of tone, drop attacks. They manifest with brief loss of muscle tone in the postural muscles or head. Indicate that they're hard to distinguish from syncope, which also involves a sudden loss of tone. And write that they're an important feature of Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, which involves multiple seizure types, including atonic seizures and also cognitive dysfunction. It peaks at roughly four years of age. We'll skip the EEG correlate, but know that there are slow, 1.5 to 2 hertz, spike and wave discharges. Finally, for the major non-motor generalized seizure, we'll address absence seizures. Indicate that absence seizures, also known as petty mal seizures, manifest with a blank stare. Patients appear to be daydreaming or zoning out. These patients may exhibit rhythmic facial movements or motor automatisms. Notably, there's no postictal confusion. Patients can dramatically pick right back up where they left off. Indicate that absence seizures can mimic an attentional disorder, as these patients can be mistakenly diagnosed with a learning disability. Indicate that they're the major manifestation in childhood absence epilepsy, which typically occurs between 4 to 8 years of age, it affects girls more than boys, and can involve hundreds of seizures in a day. Show that children with absence seizures appear to be daydreaming or staring off in school. Indicate that the EEG demonstrates runs of well-organized, 3 hertz generalized, high-voltage, rhythmic spike and wave discharges. Now let's address the localization of focal epilepsies. Note that the primary focal epilepsy syndrome is temporal lobe epilepsy. To localize them, we can use both lateralizing and localizing signs. In regards to seizure laterality, indicate versive movements. This refers to contralateral turn of the head and or the eyes away from the seizure. Draw a brain and show a seizure emanating from the right hemisphere. Then draw pair of eyes and show that they are forced to the left, the side opposite or contralateral to the side of the seizure. Next, indicate that Todd's paralysis refers to a postictal weakness in the side of the body opposite to the seizure. Consider the postictal slowing we drew following a tonic-clonic seizure. The brain is slow and suppressed, so 
Naturally, the corresponding side of the body is limp and weak. Now, in regards to lobar localization, draw a medial phase of a cerebral hemisphere, divided into the temporal, frontal, parietal, and occipital lobes. Indicate that temporal lobe seizures often manifest with sensory auras, such as a feeling of rising in the stomach, automatisms, such as lip smacking, or speech arrest, or another form of cognitive impairment. Indicate that frontal lobe seizures tend to be stereotyped and also nocturnal. They're easily confused for psychogenic seizures or a movement disorder. Then indicate that parietal lobe seizures tend to cause somatosensory auras, which we could guess based on the function of this lobe, as well indicate that occipital lobe seizures often produce elemental visual phenomena, such as flashing lights or geometric shapes, much like migraine auras. This concludes our diagram.